SS31 is becoming a very popular peptide for restoring mitochondrial health, but it is expensive, so it's about finding the right dose for you. So I'm gonna share my protocol as well as my results. But first of all, let's cover what SS31 does. SS31, otherwise known as alamopritide, it binds to cardiolipin in the inner mitochondrial membrane, therefore stabilizing that mitochondria and improving electron transport efficiency. So it decreases the leakage of electrons and formation of mitochondrial reactive oxygen species while upregulating energy production. In essence, better coupling of oxidative phosphorylation means cells generate more energy with less damage. So it's been shown to improve mitochondrial function in various different tissues like brain, heart, kidneys, muscle, and so you're basically restoring morphology of mitochondria, you know, preserving that criste structure. In animal models, SS31 reversed age-related kidney decline, improving glomerular filtration, reducing kidney fibrosis, and improving mitochondrial respiration in those nephrons. And I'm gonna get onto kidney health in my own personal results in a minute. It's been shown to have some cardiovascular protective mechanisms of it, improving cardiac output in heart failure models, as well as enhancing left ventricular function in aging and metabolically stressed hearts. In addition, it's got some neuroprotective facets to it as it crosses the blood-brain barrier, so it can improve in synaptic function and reduce neuroinflammation, so this could be helpful in diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And of course, this crosses over into muscle function, improving endurance and age-related decline in those muscle cells. So let's talk about my own results with SS31. I did it back in November, a very moderate dose at 3.3 milligrams, just doing it for nine days. And what I've seen is one particular area I was very interested in was my kidney age, this is using Symphony Age with True Age. So it looks at various different biomarkers, you know, EGFR, but also Cystatin C, and I've measured this separately as well. But yeah, so looking at my kidney age, it's reversed by a whopping nearly three years. Bearing in mind, because the, the two tests I did were eight and a half months apart or 0.66 years. So in reality, my kidneys are sure they could, should have got older, but now they're, they're nearly three years younger, the age delta. Well, yes, there's been other changes. I don't normally wait that long between tests, but I had an error with my results back in October. So, but looking at it, uh, there's other things that I've changed, like I've switched from using metformin to empagliflozin, and that has renal protective properties as it affects nutrient sensing pathways, you know, peeing out the extra glucose, not damaging the kidneys, as well as activating autophagy pathways. In between those two tests, I also took the kidney bioregulator Pilotax, and that helps rejuvenate the kidneys, restoring cellular function to a more youthful state. Check out our 12 month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different biomarkers and get your future vitality optimized. There's even a six month break clause if your situation was to change. To touch back on empagliflozin, in this class of uh, diabetic drug called an SDLT2 inhibitor, one thing you do need to be wary of is yeah having electrolytes because you're actually you know peeing out as I mentioned the, that extra glucose so it can deplete you of those electrolytes. And uh, looking at mine, I mean the one I, I've bought this uh, electrolyte mix that's low sodium, and the reason why is it's actually quite rare for someone to be low in sodium unless you're you know an extreme athlete doing a sauna a lot. Um, and, you know, or if you eat all your food is just prepared from scratch and so you don't add any extra salt, but even healthy food does have extra salt in it. So it's quite rare for someone to be low in sodium. For example, the brown flakes I have, they're very healthy, low in sugar, high in fiber, but they do have salt, same with the bread I have. And I've noticed salt recently has been getting a clean bill of health. And I think it all depends on what your diet's like because it can be toxic for your mitochondria when you overload yourself with it. One final compound I'd like to shed light on is SL PP332 and this has been shown it can have some kidney protective facets to it as you're increasing increasing mitochondrial biogenesis through ERR agonism. In the case of SLU I only did a 30 day cycle so quite modest at 500 micrograms only on weekdays with the pile attacks that was quite an intensive course for a bioregulator doing 60 capsules and that was spread over 30 days. Well, yes, stacking things isn't the best for isolating what made the biggest difference. I don't generally like to have such big gaps between testing, so I wouldn't have run so many compounds over that period of time if it had been more condensed between tests. And yeah, I, I do agree with changing lifestyle practices 
in tandem with running some kind of uh, compound because then they, they do it seems to have good synergy when you improve your lifestyle and run something at the same time since that cycle about five months ago of ss31 i've just completed another one but doing a very low dose of just one milligram over 10 days and this was just to repair damage to that uh, cardiolipin membrane as just over life i mean i had a uh, break away and then I'm um, having more oxidized linoleic acid and that's been shown to really damage that uh, cardiolipin membrane. Obviously when you're away on holiday you can't control what food you have. Same on weekends too, uh, you know, sometimes I have different things. I, tr I avoid really deep fried stuff because that is very high in uh, AGEs. But uh, oxidized linoleic acid metabolites, they've been shown to very much, uh, you know, do all kinds of things like mitochondrial uh, uncoupling, so cytochrome C release, meaning apoptosis, as well as uh, inefficiency in that electron transport chain. So yeah, I'll continue doing pulses of SS31 as and when required, as it doesn't just stabilize cardiolipin, it may also prevent and reverse peroxidation too, therefore helping with mitochondrial coupling, as well as restoring that cristae structure of the mitochondria and reducing ROS without blunting redox signaling, like it can do with some antioxidants. So I've been getting my SS31 from Peptides of London, and they've had recent testing across the board on their peptides, a lot of companies, they might have been, it could have been quite a number of years since they last done testing. So that's a positive. And yeah, definitely it does work for me. So yeah, and I've, I've used other peptides like GHKCU. So yeah, very reasonably priced peptides, research grade. And speaking to the owner of it, they're, they're actually supplying a top university with one called Epitalon for a study. And yes, yeah, so that'll be coming out in the, the next few months. So if you've got any feedback using SS31, then please do comment down below. Obviously the dose does vary depending on what condition you have, what kind of the results you're looking for. And yeah, if you like that video, check out this one on Motsi, another mitochondrial derived peptide that has all kinds of different benefits across the system. Thanks for watching, see you next time.